Happy New Year, everybody. This is Mike Moo here. I'm over here in Las Wages for the CES convention show. I'm going to be creating a lot of digital content for you, so make sure you stay tuned if you're interested. Every year at CES, a lot of the TV manufacturers showcase hundreds of TVs for us to take a look at. Now, what about people who already have TVs and just are interested in looking to do some sort of simple upgrade? Enter in a smart LED backlights, okay? Backlights, surrounding backlights. In this case, this is the SengLED smart Wi-Fi LED TV light strip. So if you're looking for a simple way to do a quick little upgrade or refresh of your entertainment system, this might be something that you might be interested in. So a little bit about this. Um, this is a uh, obviously a smart Wi-Fi LED TV light strip. Now, if you want a little bit of lighting or special effects behind the TV set, this is something that could be used to augment your experience on TV or playing videos or playing video games. Uh, unlike regular LED lights, this will actually adapt its light to more complement what's showing on a screen. Now, this does this without a hub, and that's one of the big differentiating differences between this and some other competitive products. And how it does this is it does a video sync through a little camera up here that is a full HD camera wide angle that looks over the entire TV screen and then adjusts the light output to match with it. Now, some other competitors use something called a hub, which you got to plug in your HDMI input to go through the hub, then back out in order to for it to synchronize the colors. This bypasses that whole thing by just having the camera up, up top. So that's one of the big differences. Now they have different models available. This one is custom fit for 70 inch screen to an 85 inch screen. And you're gonna to wanna to get the model that works best for your size of the screen. Why? Because uh, not only are there for the bigger one here, you're gonna have up to close to about 12 feet of LED light strips, but also the wide angle camera needs to be able to capture the entire uh, size of the screen in order to, for it to function properly. Now this works with Alexa and Google. We're gonna go ahead and try that out in a bit, but first uh, I'll do a little bit of a uh, unboxing. Now the details about what's inside, there's power adapter, 1080p camera, which um, you know I'll go over that as well as what it says, 4.8 meters of light strips. So this is actually has 15.7 feet. So a uh, little bit mistake over there. I think the smaller one has about 12 feet. This has 15 feet. It's got mounting trap clips, so it's really easy to just stick it on. It's got cleaning pads and a little reset pin. So here's, we're gonna go ahead and look and see what's inside the box here. I don't know if I could just carefully open this without my TSA approved lock. Trusty little TSA <laughs> approved tiny little scissors. Part of my toiletry kit to unbox this guy. Okay, so there's an app that you connect with it, and that is, of course, included free for you to connect with it uh, through Wi Fi, I believe. Um, there's a little welcome card in here and a little phone number in case you need technical support on how to get this to work, as far as some tips inside the box. We also have this quick little simple user manual. Keep in mind that this will need a 2.4 gigahertz Wi Fi, which is what most people have. Uh, in addition to a lot of people now have the um, 5.2 gigahertz, and uh, that is not going to be supported on here. So this is like typical smart home type of products in here. So there's two different sizes uh, for uh, available for this, at least right now. There is the one that is the 50 inch to 65 inch version of this, and that's going to be up to 11.8 feet of LED strips. And then there's a 70 to 85 inch version. Again, I'm going to be testing the 75, 70 to 85 inch version. Now it looks like the insulation is really simple, but take a look at the way that the insulation needs to go about and how you bend it. So this is going to be key when installing the LED light strip on the back of your TV set. But for the most part, at least what I like about this is that you can do it yourself. It seems to be fairly simple to do as long as you can follow some basic instructions and uh, also that you don't need to use any hardware, drill any holes or anything like that. Looking on this, there's also a two-year limited warranty on it, which is nice, but you know, these LEDs typically last far in excess of the two hour time frame if you were to turn it on basically 24 seven because they are LED lights. All right, inside the box, there are several different components. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look, look at this first one. These are the mounting strips that we will be using. Includes an alcohol pad here to go clean up the surface to make it a little bit easier. 
Here is the reset pin, which is very typical of uh, you know what you use on cell phones, for instance. And then these are actually 3M clips that you clip on the back of your TV. These things won't destroy or damage your um, your TV, so you don't really have to worry about uh, these um, these things getting getting your TV all mixed up in the back. Then there is the obligatory AC adapter. And this runs at 12 volts, 1.7 amps. So keep that in mind. That's how much energy it could potentially consume, which also means that it's gonna be pretty darn bright. Then we have the camera. This is a full 1080p camera sensor, and it's got a protective film on top that you'll want to go ahead and pull off and remove. And this will then mount at the top of your said TV set. And then you got to connect the power, uh, the power AC, uh, the power adapter here. So the power comes into the camera system up here. There's a little DC jack up here, and then the rest of the LED lights will plug in through this piece over here. So it makes it a little bit nicer and cleaner than um, something that some, something I've seen from another manufacturer. And here are as the 15 inches of, uh, no, 15, <laughs> 15, some, 15 plus feet of the LED strip lights. So this, will, this piece right here, this will plug into the back of the camera system. So that's it. And this is actually empty. This too, yeah. So that's it. That's all you really need to get going. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and set this up on the TV screen uh, downstairs and we'll do a quick on testing to see how well this works. DC jack, of course, plugs in here. And then the LED strip lights will then plug in to here, just down here below. It can only fit one way anyway. Keep in mind, I'm not a professional home installer, so if you have some other tips on doing this stuff, please comment down below. This isn't for industrial application. It's just for use in home. there one final one up top all four corners as you can see without doing anything to power it on it really provides a bit of a backlight here I use an iPhone so I'm gonna go ahead and use the App Store and download the Sengled home app that you see right here so I'm at home, get, it's completely free. Unfortunately, there's only two stars. Hopefully I won't have any problems, but we shall see. I'm gonna open it up. All right, home notifications, don't have a single account. So I gotta create an account which is gonna be pretty simple. It's typically gonna be sent to your email. You gotta agree, put in an email address and they'll send you a password. So I'm gonna do that off camera. Agree. Email has been sent with a link to verify my account. Account activation required and click to finish. Congratulations, has been activated. So I go back here to the app and I just 
point out that I have verified it. Now I got to set up a password. All right, after I put in my password, I go ahead and click start. Now I'm going to add a device. Wi-Fi LED and accessories. It's not the string bulb. Allow while using the app. Good allow power on device. Make sure the device is on pairing mode. So I'm going to go and go to Wi-Fi settings. I believe it's automatically in pairing mode. And then from the Wi-Fi section, I'm going to go ahead and try to find this angled Wi-Fi TV sync strip right here. See that? It's right there. Let me try to zoom in a little bit here. Single Wi-Fi LED setup. Once it connects, after it gives me a confirmation, it's taking a little while. As you can see, the signal is pretty strong, though. Taking a little while. OK, done. Go back to the app. Now it's searching for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi routers. Again, then I just select and put in the password for your home Wi-Fi or whatever Wi-Fi that you're going to be using. So I'm going to put in the Wi-Fi password in here. I did that and then I click next. And after that, it will say that it is trying to connect right now. Please wait. It's connecting. Oh, I saw the light blinking in the back. Looks like something's happening. Still says to please wait though. I see a bunch of colors showing up on a screen back there. Still trying to connect. That looks kind of cool, to be honest. All right. That's it. Please turn on other lights in your room, then power on the TV. Attach a camera to the bottom. Already did that. I don't have all the lights on right now, but it's pretty bright in a room. I'm just going to click on. Uh, I'm just going to click on ready and that I have the camera mounted on the top of the TV. You can mount it on the bottom, too, but I like it more on the top here. Confirm. So we're going to figure out whether or not facing from the TV backside, are you going counterclockwise? Or are you going clockwise? And from the back and side, I was going counterclockwise. So you have those two options, of course, as I went over earlier. I'm going to click on confirm. Now it says it's refreshing the picture. Drag the four blue corners to the four corners of the TV, then drag the top center. So there is a preview of what the TV screen looks like right now. So um, yeah, this is going to be a little bit interesting to try to figure out. So this is the top corner there, All right? Let's see if you can see that. And this is the top right hand corner there. This is the bottom left corner over here. Bottom. Wow, this is a little tough here. Bottom left corner over here. So it's a little bit tougher than I thought it would be. There we go. So it kind of looks like a little trapezoidal uh, trapezoidal thing. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to click on submit. OK, one device added. Looks like we're done. Uh, no, I can set up the room now. OK, so I can just choose. I'm just going to choose living room. OK. I'm going to click next. There it is. I'm done. At this point, I can hook this up with Amazon, Alexa, Google Home, Apple uh, HomeKit. I'm not going to do that. Pretty much, this is something that I'm just going to set and forget. But if I did, uh, then I just add that as a skill in the uh, app. And, and over here, um, I don't think I have any smart devices here in terms of uh, audio over here. So I'm going to skip this for now. Lights can be controlled as a group right in the living room. Since I only have one single device right now, it really doesn't matter. It's just this is just a little guide to let you know what's going on. Different scenes I could do uh, is on the bottom and then there's different routines I could do. So if I turn this on and off, see that I press this button here for the living room bulb. 
it'll turn on the screen light in the back on and off. That's pretty cool. Okay. Settings, uh, it's probably a good idea to do a firmware update. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just choose upgrade. It'll download the latest firmware that usually solves any issues that you may have with, uh, with just about any smart device, it's always a good idea to do. And usually that won't take too long for a somewhat more simpler device uh, like this. So do that, let that finish before um, we're gonna go ahead and start testing to see how this all looks with uh, watching something on the uh, TV screen. So what I'm really looking for is, the, is uh, latency. If there's how much latency there is in matching the background of the light to whatever's showing on the screen. Okay, looks like it's done. And it says it's offline, but it probably, after you do the firmware, the system needs to reboot before it connects back onto Wi Fi. So I see it just rebooted. There's different themes I could do. Um, there's dark. This is just for the app, it seems. Manage widget, performance, wonder what that's about. Oh, energy saving stuff, how much how much power used. This is all neat. This is all for the SengLED uh, app and ecosystem. Okay, so I'm gonna power on the TV now and we'll get a good, good idea, good feeling of uh, what's gonna be shown on the screen here. And hopefully so that we don't get any copyright, we're only gonna show basically my video stuff. I'm gonna power it on now using the Apple TV. This is a Samsung screen, but it really doesn't matter. It could be any TV screen here. We're gonna go down. Oh, gotta use the Samsung. Okay, let's go to home, check out YouTube. And we will just search for my video. There's a lot of mics here. All right. Let's see. Yeah, my channel. Let's look at ah, cheap forties. You need to let the police handle this. This is an ad. <laughs> I'm going to turn off the uh, audio on there. Skip ads. You know, I'm not seeing any change right now. Let's see if we go. Here, are these complementary colors? You know, I'm not seeing the complementary colors right now. Maybe I didn't do the synchronization right. All right, let's try this again. So I'm gonna to go to living room, adjust settings, brightness, effects. Okay, all right. <laughs> so um, here are some settings that you can do on here. So there's there's a brightness setting. If whether or not you just want it straight up white, specific colors, or you want to do specific effects, including color cycling, rhythm, festival, Halloween, Christmas, all this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and choose. Go in here. Let's see, I can force it to a different white, cooler color, warm, let's just do daylight. And looks like it is kind of matching. And now it's in video sync mode. So this is the mode that we want, video sync. Uh, if you're playing a game, you could do game sync or you could choose random color. Let's look at Christmas. Okay, that's kind of neat. But video sync is pretty much all I'm gonna do. So we'll see how well this syncs with what's going on on the screen here. Do you like this effect? It's kind of rainbowy. And I am on video sync mode. 
Yeah, I'm definitely on video sync mode. So this is video sync mode. This is this is what you're going to get. And this is 100% brightness. This is about as bright as it gets in the, in the house anyway. And I'm definitely in video sync. So and I'm going to try game sync, see if it comes out faster. So this is in game sync mode. I'm going to try video sync again. I see some of it, but uh, at the same time, I'm definitely seeing more colors. And I guess some people could find this a little bit uh, distracting or complimentary. It is just a simple game, just crossy road, crissy road. So I'm going to let you see the color here. All right. So. I'm just going to jump around so you can see this is the effect playing a basic game. I guess if it does a really good job, you won't really notice that it's there. Oh, I don't know. Let me know if you think this enhances your gaming experience or not. So let me know what you think. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. You can make it so that it doesn't sync completely if you don't want it to. As you can see, here's an example of it color syncing to stuff going on in the background. It's a nice, neat little upgrade to make uh, your home theater appear a little bit more premium. Good part is, if you don't like the effect at all, you can just go and turn it off real easily just by using the single home app or actually just using uh, or just ask, asking one of your uh, home voice assistants to just go ahead and turn it off. But here is, is something with it off and here is it with it on. Now that you've seen uh, what it's like to use this system, I think that just about everybody will agree with me that it does give your overall home theater experience a more premium feel. The lights in the back, you know, fluctuate and they accentuate what you see on the screen in many cases. Now, is this for everyone? I think so if you are able to go ahead and adjust it and tune it to your needs. So for instance, right now I have this set on pretty bright, but just about matching or exceeding the brightness of what's being shown on the screen here. Just about for anybody, if you just turn down the brightness, it will be able to be acceptable and accentuate whatever is being shown on the screen. So for instance, in general, we like to keep it at about a 20 to 25% level for the level of brightness and the level of the TV screen brightness that we typically have here, uh, down here in the living room. Now, if you really, really want things to pop, obviously it can go all the way up to 100%. And sometimes it, uh, depending on how far it is from the wall, it could seem to outshine and distract from what's being shown on the screen. But that's the great thing about this. It's completely adjustable in the brightness settings. Now, as far as the rest of the other settings besides the video sync, uh, I found them to be a little bit gimmicky. For instance, the Christmas setting just blinks red and green, and red, and green, over and over again. They have a whole complete setting just for that. What I hope that SengLED will do in the future is allow us to really customize a bit more uh, how the system reacts to what's being shown through the camera or on the screen. Sometimes it feels like it's a perfect fit. Other times it feels like, well, the color kind of is a little bit too distracting. So. Once again, it's just a matter of tuning it to your preferences a little bit more or just turning it down or turning it off completely. And that's something that you could easily do with the app or through any of the voice control modules. So in conclusion, I feel like this is a good gift for just about anyone. Uh, is it the best one that's available out there? I don't know. I really don't think so. Because if there, if it were, um, why would you have all the different price ranges all the way from $50 all the way up to a couple hundred dollars? That remains to be seen. But as you can see from the results, 
that I'm showing here on the screen, uh, it definitely does add to your home theater experience. And it definitely does feel like it adds a much more premium feel to the overall experience of watching whatever it is that you watch on TV. Is it a little bit too much for the price? I think it's it's relatively affordable. The one that I have shown here is, uh, I think it's on sale right now. Check out my link. There's a coupon code that brings it down to $80, and that's for a good 70-inch plus screen. For the smaller ones, you can get them for about $60 with the coupon code that Sunlight is having right now, and that makes it very reasonable to add. Plus, this will work on just about any other TV screen that you can move along in the future, and that's definitely a plus. All right, that's it for this video. Please give it a like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.